uh, okay so welcome to the you know first uh, first installment of the revamped uh, macrovin journal club so we had this journal club before already but uh, you know it was it was off for quite some time and we have decided to uh, start it restart it but with some changes uh, we wanted to make it uh, we wanted to make it more accessible to the students uh, so that nobody is left out feels left out so what we have decided that we have decided to hold this journal club as a uh, platform for pedagogical talks and lectures so that so uh, that uh, so that, uh, so that uh, students can grasp things uh, you know topics which are uh, which has current research interest but which are not covered usually in their courses uh, it is usually in their courses but with some course background uh with some course background it can be uh, thing uh so we have decided it's it's uh, because it's an unprecedented time so we have decided we are obviously meeting over teams platform this online platform we do not know when we'll be able to do it uh, physically and so what uh, we have decided on the time that we will meet uh, if nothing is wrong then we'll meet uh, tuesday afternoon 4 to 5 uh, every alternate tuesday so there will be two talks slash lectures per month and it need not be a single talk just like for example i have created a two part kind of lecture kind of stuff and if the speaker thinks that he will he or she will delineate stuff in over more than one uh, slots that is most welcome and at least uh, for this semester we'll continue with this time uh, unless something uh, serious i mean something drastic happens we will stick to this timing but uh, based on the need of the any issues arising we can reschedule uh, the time times of these talks of of course keeping in mind all kinds of uh, class schedules and all those kind of stuff okay so these and and we are also keep ke keeping this recorded all these sessions will be kept recorded uh, i mean whether uh, so we we will keep keep it recorded and then what we can try to do we can try to create a teams and we can upload it there or whether some of the institutes are doing things like whether we can put it in youtube or not that's a good question that's a different question but we will keep all these things recorded and for our internal uh, data keeping purposes so these are all the logistics uh, that this we will be uh, for the this restarted uh, journal club but despite the name journal club it did not be like it did not be description of papers or something so so i started being you know one of the organizers it seems or the time starting this uh, box but i decided to follow up uh, for, for i decided to show you at least what i think what my philosophy behind this uh, kind of journal club is uh, meetings so i decided to take a topic which is uh, in a sense it's a broad topic it's very broad extremely broad topic but these two lectures that i will be giving it's sort of an invitation to this uh, topic you can think you can take them as invitation so they will be very it will be ex at extremely elementary and basic levels so that <clears throat> if you are interested if you find something interesting you can explore in the uh, we can discuss it so it's just to start an uh, uh, discussion regarding this kind of topics i would not say that this topic is something which is very kind of a trendy i mean it's something which will not uh, catch eyes like there are some like let's say information paradox but i would say it's more like an accurate taste like those of us with like this thing so these two lectures were about knots and the kind of knot is a study of uh, it's a mathematics but what kind of uh, things that wh why a physics a physicist may be interested in so 
So question is this, that why a physicist might be interested in studying knots? One can ask this question, that why uh, this is in studying knots? So let me give you some motivations. So one of the very important places where knots play a very important role is this anionic physics. Anionic physics is the physics involving uh, <clears throat> particles known as anions, which are uh, which are those, which are found actually in two plus one dimensional uh, two plus one dimensional systems. And these are particles with fractional statistics, meaning they are they do not belong to either fermion class or boson class. So they have so for fermions have spin half integer or half odd integer precisely, and bosons are having spin integer spins. Anions can have any fractional spin possible. But the reason that anions have these kind of properties to that it's the to that point knots come very <clears throat> play a very important role. And as it is by now well known that anionic physics is central to a way of approaching quantum computation goes, which goes by the name of topological quantum computation, where these knots are of central importance. Even the entire designing of topological quantum computation. The various, it's, it's really a hardware problem for quantum computation. It's not a software problem. But in this entire designing various gates and et cetera, et cetera, essentially not play uh, the key role. And in fact, the various gates that quantum logical gates, they are implemented in topological quantum computation. Why a bunch of <coughs> knotted structure? So this is one which is something you can think of. It's a very uh, prominent uh, application and prominent reason you should be uh, one should be interested one can be interested in the studying knots. Secondly, there is an interesting connection. I mean, it's it's not that well explored, but it's still explored. It's basically patterns of quantum entanglement. I mean, well, we know that usually when we talk about quantum entanglement we mostly talk we mostly talk about you know numerical quantities associated with entanglement with measures how much entanglement is there or not now <clears throat> mostly we look into bipartite entanglement that's why this issue is not there really but if you go beyond bipartite entanglement then actually the question comes that you know there are some qualitative features of entanglement comes in the play like not it's possible that two entanglements are not equivalent kind of stuff. Now it has been it, it has been investigated and there are some words which actually show a connection between entanglement, that is a pattern of entanglement, and then they relate it to some knotted structures. For example, two qubit entanglement and for that matter bipartite entanglement in a specific system, it has been shown to correspond to a, uh, a link of this form. So this is known as a hop link. So this uh, this is known as a uh, hoplink uh, kind of it's a it's a it's basically a uh, <clears throat> it's basically a link uh, link meaning it's there there are two circles which have been linked together so this is a two qubit entanglement and, and if you can think if you just cut if you take so at least here in this aspect tracing over one of the subsets one of the qubit meaning just cut one of the circles then you are left with one circle. Right? This picture, however, becomes more interesting when you go to three qubit entanglement. As you know, there are in three qubit entanglement, there are two states in a sense which are non-equivalent. Meaning, uh, there are there are two kinds. You can think of it like two kinds of entanglement. I have just written one state. This uh, this is this the so-called uh, Greenberg, Horn, and Zellinger state. Now, <clears throat> this state, and this is a very old result. That this state can be actually can you can make a connection between this state. And this link, which is uh, uh, known as, so this is known as, actually, this is known as, Boromian ring. So it's, it's, it's a very interesting ring. So you can see it's, a, it's, 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 it's basically a link of three circles or something that we could call unknown. But the interesting pattern is that, if you just cut any of the circle, either green or red or green, you will be left with two circles, but which are unlinked. Now, what does that correspond to? I mean, th that 
that corresponds to the behavior that is particular to GHG set state that if you trace out one of the qubit, you will be left with two unentangled qubits. And even for <coughs> w, so there's another kind of state for three qubit entanglement, which is called the W state. Again, there is an indication that W state corresponds to a certain kind of knotted structure, uh, a certain kind of knot structure known as uh, torus knots. And a similar, so for example, this a similar classification of uh, entanglement patterns has been attempted in for four qubits. There are the various classes of uh, there are various interesting classes of them. So one may wonder whether you can, whether whether one can actually establish a connection between these links or knots and uh, these various entanglement patterns. So <clears throat> this is one. I think I would say it's a it's a it's a dark horse kind of problem, but it's very fascinating because uh, and and it can be pushed to a quite a uh, great level and. Yeah, I find, I mean, I've started recently exploring this thing, but I think there's a very interesting topological question can be asked because entanglement also has some topological benefits. Now, finally, I mean, finally, you can think of what these days are being called the physical mathematics. Physical mathematics means that you basically ask a mathematical question. It's a question, it's a mathematical question. It has nothing to do with physics. But you use physics like quantum field theory as a tool to solving that mathematical question. And this line of investigation, you know, it's it's no exaggeration to state that this, these kinds of investigations started with uh, you know, groundbreaking papers by F. Bitt. And we will discuss uh, his uh, one of the most called classic paper uh, for which um, practically it's one of the papers for which uh, Witten got the Fields Medal in the next lecture. What it really does try to do is this that you know various kind of knot invariants can be constructed by calculating a bunch of uh, correlation function or some expectation value in quantum field theory. So this kind of investigations, you know, where you ask hey, a question. Yeah, yeah. Can I ask you a question? Yes, yes. Uh, so, so go to the figure of uh, this uh, GAZ state. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. three circles are three qubits, right? Yeah, you can think of. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So suppose uh, so which one is uh, zero or one? I I didn't understand. So suppose oh, if okay, you're, okay. yeah. 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 So okay. So you can just okay. So the idea is that, that I mean, uh, it's it, 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 okay. You have to think. It's not exactly like zero and one, but you can just think that when you're tracing over, you are really summing over all the states, right? So. I mean, I have not shown you the exact correspondence, but the tracing over is like cutting one of the, uh, okay. you, you want to descend, just cut one of the circles. So let's say you cut this uh, green green circle. So that will be equivalent to like tracing over one of the cubes. Mm -hmm. So suppose, suppose there is that. a state, suppose there is a state 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, and 1, 0, 1, something. So there's, their structure will be different or? Something or same. Okay, okay, okay. I think. Uh, okay, so okay. So I, 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 I do not know. So I, I don't know this. Uh, so for this state, uh, this is thing. But so there can be states connected to this GHG state by those uh, transformations called lock operations. So that will be correspond to some transformation of this. So we have to see that whether uh, the, it is connected to the state that we are talking about is connected with by this. Uh, slog operations like this, what is called special linear operator and classical communication. Blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, I think so. As long as you can, all those states can construct, I think you can represent it by this kind of topology. Of course, the question in what sense it's connected, I mean, what sense is topology? I think I was seeing the original paper where it was uh, it was first uh, shown by, by an Indian guy. What I forgot his name. So he just considered this state, but I think the topological question can be made much, much more kosher with some more sophisticated things. Yes, so, so in this state, it seems that this uh, blue blue ring is is um, holding these two things together, this pink and yellow, right? So that means yeah, if you are, no, if you are no, tracing not blue, no, not just blue. Suppose suppose you cut any one of them. So okay, okay. So so what? So you do understand that whenever, wherever this green thing is getting cut, meaning that thing is going down and it's wherever the solid line, the solid line is going up. So suppose you 
cut this red red one so you remove this red one now you mm -hmm. see you are left with uh, just the green and the uh, blue but mm -hmm. they are not linked like that they are actually yeah. kind of sitting one above the other so you can uh, just mm -hmm. uh, separate them and similarly for any other you cut uh, so this is a special kind of link that is called mm -hmm. if you cut one you just unlink first sure. okay. <clears throat> okay so uh, so what I will do today, so I will give you a basic mathematical exposition of knots and links, what is the meaning of knot and what is the meaning of link. It's very elementary and basics and just a few things. Okay, another thing I did not uh, tell, I forgot to write. That is because these, uh, these knots have a very close connection to uh, Feynman diagrams that we use uh, you know, in calculating various uh, particle processes. In fact, the geometry of those Feynman diagrams which are essentially conceived of as a graphs, but which can be also related to this uh, knot. In fact, knot theory has come very uh, you know, crucial on this uh, in, in, in this endeavor. Various calculating various uh, various kinds of Feynman diagrams, higher loop state Feynman diagrams, non-trivial topological information. About them. So, with this, at least now I've made a case where you can, where you know that okay. Uh, Interested in studying knots. Let me just uh, do a very basic exposition of knots so that you can then follow stuff. Okay, so yeah. So knots, at least mathematical knots, you know, physical knots, you know, there, there is, there is uh, always, so any physical knot is something like that. Some, uh, okay, this is not a true knot, but you can do something with this kind of thing. A physical knot has actually, uh, it's its like a rope where you make a knot and then the loose ends are open. But such a knot can always be unknotted, can always make it straight. That's why mathematically, knot is basically, a knot is a basically a closed loop. But a closed loop in three dimensions. So basically a knot is... Uh, embedded in R3 or equivalently S3, where S3 is basically when you add a point at infinity and infinity, you can compactify the R3. So basically you can you know, wrap R3 by adding one extra point, uh, which we call, uh, which we call <coughs> point at infinity, to get the S3. S3 is a three-dimensional analog of the sphere. So a knot is basically you can think of it's an embedding of S1 to S3. So S1 is a circle. So S1 is the usual circle. So that's an embedding of S1 into S3. The trivial embedding, so the trivial trivial embedding is called an Unknown, which is a simple set. So this is what what is what, what is called an unknown, which is the just a trivial. There's nothing wrong. Next, so let me show you another non-trivial. So next, you know, the most famous is this example, which is trifoil. So this is what a uh, uh, this is what a trifoil is. But this is so you have to think of this like a rope in three dimension, and you are taking a projection. So you are basically putting a light on that rope uh, that rope structure. So this crossing, this line which is being which has been broken, so that line is passing under through the line which is solid. So at each crossing, the solid line is going going above, and the broken line is going down. So that's how, and these kind of diagrams where we will consider projection of knots from three-dimensional space on a two-dimensional surface, it's called a knot diagram or sometimes called a link diagram. 
so link diagram uh, so these are called not diagram or say a piece of state when they call link link is basically you can think of that when there are two nodes which are linked uh, but non intersecting so the, which are linked in a non intersecting so the way i show you so this is this is basically two are not sapping uh, so it, it, it's just uh, one you have just uh, linked two circuits this kind of stuff so this this is what is called a link and this is called a uh, not so the trivial that the, the the trivial counterpart of link is just which is known as a unlink so in this case it's just two unknots or two or any any two knots you can just think of but it's the most trivial so it's just two unknots separated so that, that just the disjoint union of uh, two unknots <clears throat> so overall both these diagrammatic representations which are uh, projections of representations so knots and links Yeah, they will be called interchangeably knot diagram or link diagram. So what we will do, we will do a combinatorial study of these. I mean, we will try to uh, uh, we will try to understand properties of knots by by doing a combinatorial study of these two uh, D projection diagrams. But before that, what is the interesting thing about projection is this. So let me show you in one example. So. So this is, we have a simple unknot, and let's look at this diagram. Now, if you just if 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 you look at, I will come to this tossing special. But if you if you, if you look from this, if you just look at at the first glance, it seems to be a knot. but it's really not a knot it's it's it's, it's not a knot because you, you can actually unfold so you, you may not unfold it in the two dimension but you can actually unfold kind of you just you just uh, you just take this lower lobe and then turn to a third dimension and you put it on the left then what you will uh, obtain is something like that which is same as this uh, Uh, unknown. Same in the sense that you are allowed to take continuous deformation. So when you when whenever we speak of same, it basically means that you can continuously deform. So it's a topological uh, equivalence. So now we are faced with a problem that suppose we are given two projections, two figures, two diagrams. How do we know that they are different? Maybe they are secretly same. Maybe something which looks like a knot is not. Really, an unknown. So we need some way to tell, to be able to classify knots. But for any kind of classification, we need an a concept of equivalence. We should be able to say, we should be able to come up with a concept where we say that okay, these two knots are equivalent, so this will be placed in one class, something like. That. So what we need is a concept of. Not equivalence. Now, what kind of equivalence we are here talking about? Of course, it's a continuous deformation, but it's a restrictive kind of continuous deformation. So, of course, it's a continuous deformation, but not any continuous deformation. Like there are much more generic class of continuous deformation. Here, it's a continuous deformation without cutting. of course that has to be there if it has to be topological and without passing through itself and it is it is this statement which is actually quite important so suppose you have uh oh So this, so this you have uh, the not the not thing. What you are not allowed is to let's let's say let's say I will say okay I will I will deform it. 
but what you're not allowed you cannot move this lower strand just across this uh, you know you, you just can't uh, penetrate this upper one even mathematically so mathematically everything is possible i mean various kinds of things are possible not everything various kinds of things are possible so if you, there there are there exists such a transformation through which you can actually take this uh, this this lower part you know penetrate through this upper curve and you know, mix with something else it is this condition that we need to be very careful that without passing through itself you know more details the kind of deformation we are looking at and it's 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 it's, it's basically a deformation in three dimensions remember it's, we will sh shortly see that what it means in two dimension but this deformation has to be made in the three dimensional space that we, in which the knot is actually lying this goes by the this goes by the name of ambient isotopy uh the important point is this ambient isotopy because ambient space meaning basically here is the rt so it's the space into which something is embedded the knot is embedded so what it really means is that when you are deforming the knot you are also deforming the ambient space but rather rather the complement of the knot in the total space so you can think of that the knot is sitting in a fluid field kind of an rt or fluid field really kind of a box and as you move along the uh, as you move the knot physically the fluid will also move so the ambient space will the complement of the knot will also change and it is that kind of deformation under which we are uh, looking for equivalence now it's an essentially three it's, it's essentially a problem of three dimension you may think okay i would do some three intrinsically three dimensional analysis but <clears throat> it can be actually improved this three dimensional analysis what what is usually done is you, 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 at least commentary what was started people were looking into how this can be understood from the from of by operations acting on two dimensional uh, this this these two dimensional projections so what we now need to see is you know what is the how to help say what is the effect of uh i'm being isotopy on you know this ah uh, 2d projection and that brings us to what is known as rydemeister moves so uh rydemeister moves are is are a bunch of in a combinatorial move i will tell you what is a move mean, that is uh, acted on this 2d projections and rydemeister's argument was that that if a knot and any ambient isotopy is actually the effect of ambient isotopy on the 2d projections is basically a sequence of these moves essentially essentially so what are these moves so now this is called the first first one is called as a type 1 move which is basically a twisting so this is something happening and this is going this there can be there can be another twisting something like uh, so the these twistings are actually different are, so in one case uh, uh, is, uh, yeah sorry for interrupting there's a question from sachin Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Sachin. He is he is uh, typing in the chat box. So can you? Oh, 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 oh. okay. Oh. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, um. Well, yeah, okay. So, so, so the ambient space, of course, of course, the knots, the way uh, the knots i mean the way knots are defined it is the knot that we are talking about it always has to be uh, embedded in a three dimensional uh, space so for example suppose you add a four dimensional uh, i mean so suppose you consider an embedding of this 
S1 on let's say R4, then there will be no knot. You can actually unknot all other, all in four dimension, all S, uh, embeddings of S1 can be actually un, uh, unknotted. So in that way, I would say that from four to higher dimension, every every embedded isotopy will reduce to a uh, unknot. But you can decide to embed S2 in R4. Then actually, actually that is what is considered as a kind of higher dimensional generalization of these knots. Then you have more interesting stuff. But the kind of and this line knots, what we are talking about, these have these have always, you know, it has to see all this funny stuff, it always has to be embedded in R. Any higher dimension, it will fail to drop. Uh, does that answer your question? So, uh, okay. So this is this is this 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 is the this is the type one. This is the type one. Now, second is a uh, what is the the famous type two move. So type two move. So so this you can think of as a twist. So it's basically you are you you are adding you are creating one uh, cross or you are twisting uh, a cross. Type two move is that suppose you have two strands. And by the way, how these moves are so I should say that how these moves are meant. So meaning is that it, it it's it's part of a larger knot. So it's it's it, so there is a larger knot and you are you're you are actually looking at a smaller portion. So when you're giving these moves, you the rest of the part of the knot is remain unchanged. Only that smaller portion you are making the change. So that's what really means. I should so there are so what this so this is one so basically what you are doing you are, you are sliding behind the so sliding down the so you are taking this left left strand and you are basically sliding down the 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 right uh, right uh, strand so there is another so of course you can there is of course the opposite is also possible that means So basically, what you do, you you slide the left one above the right. So this is what is known as a type two. See that it it, it has created two two crossings. So the one. Okay. And finally, which is the type three move, and which and this type three move is quite famous because it it is it, connected to many. Uh, uh, Many interesting things. So, and those of you who know some integral systems, the type three move is something like that. So, so this is this, and this, this goes to So what you have done, you have done basically what you have done is, uh, you know, in a sense, you, you have taken this uh, uh, this uh, pink strand and you have you have actually slided it across a crossing on the other side. And I must tell you, this is a connection. So this type three move is actually, uh, you know, in, 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 it actually corresponds to uh, <coughs> in the context of uh, the, Integrable system, something called a famous Young Bax equation. It also comes in if you want to solve, uh, uh, you know, the kind of stuff like two Dizing model we see, like called star triangle uh, relationship. So, for for doing combinatorics, whatever we need to look for, you know, when you when you have a knot, I have to see when I'm given two knots, I have to check whether these two knots can be brought into each other via a bunch of uh, uh, a, a sequence of these kind of these three kinds of moves, but there is a problem. There is a problem in the sense that now, if I give you two arbitrary knots, it may be very difficult to actually uh, to actually make this happen. I mean, I mean it, it may take uh, 
quite a time. So I mean, it, it, it's just a laborious process. You have to just look for it, just play around, it, game around. It. But no systematic way of uh, it's it's not a systematic way of experience. And that is why what people construct is what is known as the not invariant. So this this not invariant that will uh, tell us how to distinguish between knots or links. So I, I was just showing you an example of knots, but the same is true. So a not invariant is is an object. I'm writing object because it can starting from a number. It can be a it can be number. It can be polynomial. It can be even more sophisticated structure like a set of groups, which is uh, unaltered. Uh, Parthiv. Yeah. So, uh, can I ask you a question? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. So, sure. uh, in the type three, uh, go back to the type three, please. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, suppose one of the strands which form the cross. Uh, okay. Now you now you bend one of the part of the strands. I mean, okay. which form the cross yeah. onto yeah. itself. Like you onto move it. Itself? Bit. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, like, it like the type cross. one. Yeah. Yeah. And. Uh, and will you be still able to uh, move or slide the pink strand like uh, the arrow has been done? I mean, uh, okay, so no. So when you're talking about you know uh, this bending this uh, one strand performing the cross, you're talking about. So then then you are actually telling you know that you are applying another. So you are applying the type one move. But when you are defining the type three move, you have to make sure that everything else is changed. So. You can definitely do, but then at, that will be like a type one followed. Then we have to see that after type one move, whether you can apply the type two move. Or so that needs to be. Uh, but when you're defining uh, it, I, I remember one statement that uh, any sort of continuous deformation is allowed. Uh, is, is it true? Yeah. So so no no continuous yes yes continuous deformation. Sorry, what kind? So you're. Talking about twist in the sense it's twisting on itself or just making a dent in this thing. So is it something like that? Let's say just a bend. Like that. Is yeah, it something like that? No, no. The the lower part. I mean the the straight okay, line so which goes like, the, and uh, yeah the lower like part in now no, no no bend it onto itself. I mean on the other oh, side, oh. not in this. Oh, it's something like that. Yeah, uh, not <laughs> opposite to the other straight line. Oh, 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 so sorry, sorry, sorry. so something this and then and then go back, uh, go back, go back. Okay, which way? This uh, way. Yes, yes, that way. So what you want? This kind of stuff. Yes, is and now, now will you be still able to slide the pink strand? Okay, pink one. Uh, so let's say. Uh, okay, 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 okay. No, so 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 you have to specify me where the pink strand is lying. So it seems now the pink strand is lying like it, it can be go down, but whether it can be up or down. So that's a good question. Uh, so it can be like this way. It can happen so that it goes even beyond that. Or the way you can slide is that there's there's another possibility is like that the, the pink line. Just go this way and uh, this above, so so so, so that the uh, white line goes behind the pink line. So yeah, you should be able to slide it, uh, slide through even there. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Fine. Great. So yeah, not angled is an object which 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 is actually unaltered by uh, unaltered by this ambient isotope. So what what does it mean? That suppose let uh, k and k prime be uh, ambient isotopic. Ambient isotopy meaning the projections of k and k prime can be connected by a sequence of uh, these 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 moves, Lady Meister moves. And let's say i k uh, being some not in the area. then 
i k is equal to i k prime. So if if k and k prime be uh, ambient isotopic and i k is some not integral, uh, then i k equal to i k prime. What is the logical equivalent statement? Is this so? What does the logical equivalent is that if i k is not equal to i k prime, then for sure k and k prime are not ambient isotopic. If this is not equal to this, so so the direction of logic is always like that. If k and k prime be ambient isotopic, uh, then i then this i k is equal to i k prime or Logically, equivalent statement is if i k is not equal to i k prime, then k and k prime cannot be uh, ambient isotopic. But most of the interesting question is this: that you know, most of the analysis of this entire North Korean classification is that if to what extent you can say that suppose if you you find i equal i k equal to i k prime, then can you uh, say that? K and K prime are equivalent. Equivalent in the sense meaning ambient isotopic. They can be connected by a bunch of right constraints. So this is the question. This is so it, it is this question that is actually of you know you can, you can think of it's, it's uh, of central uh, question that is uh, bothering kind of stuff. Okay, <clears throat> so. Uh, so that's what uh, a not invariant is. That, but it, it, it's almost always an, an algebraic invariant, um, in the sense that, of course, you, you would like to calculate something, some number, some polynomial, or something like that, and you want to cal you want to calculate that, and from calculating this, you should be able to say something about possible equivalence or non-equivalence between the knots. So that is what this entire not invariant business is about. Now there are many not invariants. There are many as various kinds of not invariants with increasing degree of uh, sophistication. I will just tell uh, you know the most uh, kind of interesting or not interesting, but I would say most um, exciting is what is known as not polynomials. So not polynomials are. Uh, Something that this is this is also a kind of not invariant. There are many polynomials. So one is called uh, Alexander Conway poly. Then there is the famous uh, Jones polynomial, which, by the way, he did a great. Uh, and then there is uh, something called on flight. PT polynomial, and you can think of that each of these polynomial is uh, is of added uh, uh, added sophistication, and something uh, you know something maybe the previous polynomial can't do something that the next polynomial can do uh, that that task to take some more information. Okay, so uh, how to uh, What are these? How so? How to define or how, how would you say what? What are the properties of, the, of these uh, polynomials? Uh, they, this kind of polynomials have, or how to have the properties of these polynomials? Or maybe how? So, so the big the question is that how to compute the polynomials? So let me tell you some properties from which you can construct some algorithms and you can ask this. Okay. So so let's. Properties. Of not polynomials. One is of course that. Uh, so let's say. Uh, uh, say. Hmm. P K is uh, not polynomial. Of 
for the not e it, it will have some variables so I, i've suppressed the variable it may be depending on it then if k and k prime the equivalent knots then k equal to k prime it's and this equality is in the sense of polynomial so there will be a bunch of terms and the coefficients everything has to match second is and this is usually taken that p unknot is equal to 1 this is the usual normalization that's taken and third these polynomials are actually uh, are defined kind of recursively they, are, they they satisfy some recursion recursive uh, relationship which is known as the skein relations which are known as the skein relations so this is what you can think of this is the algorithmic so the, it it gives you an algorithm to compute the not polynomials uh, uh, not polynomials or slash link polynomials it's 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 the first step of uh, al that's an algorithm which is basically a recursion relationship okay so let me show so let me focus on this part because uh, this is this gives one algorithm obviously may not be that useful but uh, uh sub yeah uh can you give one example of that yes, kind of yes, yes yes yeah I, i'm actually that so we show you at least like so usually this not polynomials are calculated for what is known as an oriented knot so oriented knot means nothing you just add a direction to the knot so for example so let's let's take the usual example of trefoil so all you do you give it a uh, uh, you give it a direction basically so let's take so you give it a direction something like that so this is this is called oriented knot because it's 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 in a certain way in which this uh, there's there's a directionality you have fixed so most of this not polynomial is calculated for oriented knots because for oriented knots uh, this crossings are distinct if you change the direction the, the crossings will be of the different nature also you can think of switching a lot of crossings so we are talking about oriented knots so if we look for an oriented knot so there so there there are there can be three something can happen with the crossing three kinds of stuff can happen one is something like that so what we will do we will always orient the crossing in a certain direction i mean it depends on what we were thinking either you can do it for, from so i i am taking this i am orienting this on north towards and then one is going towards right handed another is going towards left handed so it depends on which one is above so which one is passing over and which one is which one is passing under so there is another possibility is this so here now the left one is passing over and the right one is passing under and there is another possibility that they do not cross each other so there are two there are these three kinds of possibilities are there so either they pass over each other or but this is just a crossing one should uh, you should remember that there is some it is it's part of some large uh, knot diagram you just look at a, a, a particular crossing that's it this particular crossing this have name this guy is called l minus this guy is usually denoted l plus this is l c and this plus minus actually come it's a convention of denoting this kind of crossing as plus this kind of crossing as a minus and this kind of crossing is uh, let's see so the, this crossing is given a number minus 1 this crossing is a number plus 1 so usually these kind of relations are nothing but a so you associate 
some polynomials corresponding to these guys. What it really means is that these polynomials are nothing but uh, nothing uh, but uh, you have a larger knot diagram and you focus on one crossing and corresponding to that crossing you identify the crossing of which kind of uh, uh, crossing are they and then you write down the correspond the correct corresponding polynomial with everything ex except unchanged you just focus on that first. and this kind relationship is of this form so it's like it's a recursion relationship equal to zero. This is a generic form of it. Scan relation, uh, scale relation. This is a generic form of scale relation. Now, using this scale relation, this kind of generic, I mean, I will show you an example, crucial example. You can actually calculate recursively not polynomial. So let me give you one example. So this is called Alexander Conway polynomial. And the scale relationships are like this. So the polynomial is of this form. So this is the Alexander Conway polynomial. So And of course, uh, remember the normalization that uh, we had this, uh, that uh, delta of R0 is equal to 1. So let me show how to actually apply this. So let's start with the trick one. So what we, what we want to calculate is So I want to calculate something like this. Okay, let's focus on this cross. Now, this crossing, so and, and let's call, this is uh, what I call trifoil cell. So this is what we want to calculate. So we want to calculate this guy. And we will cal calculate this recursively using this, uh, this scale relations. So this is a crossing. And if you look at carefully, this crossing is of the form L plus. What you need to do, just okay. So, so what you so try to see from the opposite directions. So you have to see it from the opposite directions, and you see that. Uh, so, if I align it from the direction in which both the both the uh, knots, uh, both the lines in the crossing are oriented northwards then you will find out the one which is going above, which is the unbroken line. That is actually going exactly like this. It's going towards the right and the broken line, that means that's going to the under the uh, other one. It's going to the left. So this is this is like an L plus. So this is an L plus. So what we will now do, we'll replace this knot. We'll replace this knot with two knots using the conway uh, sorry using the scan relation so what we will write is this so this three foil z equal to and we will we will uh, break it this way so what we will do so scan so first thing is l plus so one thing we will do is we will switch the crossing so that will look like So what we have done is, and another is, so what we have done, we have done basically is, in this case, we have just switched the crossing in the sense that we have sent the, sent the guy which was up to the down and the guy which was going under, we have taken it to be over. That's what we have done. And the other one, we will just, and this is called a splicing, we will just splice the knot. So what we, do, what we will find out is of this thing. Uh, 
Um, no, so so note that it is the same. It is the same crossing. It's exactly the same crossing. So it's just L plus, which was L plus. We have taken this to be L minus, and it's L naught. So if we call this polynomial to be something, so let's let's call this polynomial to be some C, this is some P, then this is C Z plus Z del D Z. Okay, let me stop. So is, is this uh, step clear, what we have done? So what we have chosen, we have focused just on a particular crossing and we have just looking into that crossing only, nothing else. We have... Uh, uh, sorry, uh, oh, 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 yeah. uh, what is Z? Oh, Z is a variable. So this, this is the not variable that we are just looking at. Okay. So this, this is just a variable of the polynomial. It's a function of the polynomial. So the final answer will be a, a polynomial in Z. So what we have done, we have just looked into, we have just uh, focused on this crossing. And we have replaced that crossing with... Uh, uh, with two different other crossings. One is called L minus and this is called L naught. And we have found a relationship between uh, this uh, delta C and delta Z delta D. But we do not know still what is delta D and delta C. Okay. So, what we now look is uh, delta, let's, let's uh, look closely on this uh, not C. Let me just draw this not once again. Big way. If you if you, if you look it closely, if you, you will realize that this is basically an unknown. What you need to do, you can you, you can just see that you know you can essentially unfold this this what what looks like a loop, unfold it and put it on the take it to the down, take it to the uh, you know take it to the south of this entire thing, and then you will be find you, you will be finding out something like uh, and then you do another unfolding and then you will be left with this uh, essential and un. So this is. So this thing is basically equivalent to R0. That means this delta CZ is equal to 1. So what we have found is one thing is the state delta trifoil Z equal to delta CZ plus Z, sorry, this is 1. This is 1 delta DZ where D is something like this. So D is this guy. Which is a, which is two unknots linked together. So this is, this is basically two unknots linked together. Uh, so now we need to calculate about, uh, we need to calculate the polynomial of this. And this we again do using the scan relations. Okay. So we have this thing. So now, of course, we, so, so it is in this direction. So we will look into this process. We look into this crossing, and this is again an L plus crossing. And we again apply a uh, scan relation. And when you apply the scan relationship, it happens this. So you get you get one guy, you get this. Which is basically 
two unknowns, by the way, which we do not uh, know. So this is this is one. So if you, if you do this change, so what you are applying, you are applying the. Uh, you are basically applying the uh, skein relationship uh, on on this cross. Sorry, you are applying the skein relationship on this cross. Sorry, I did it wrong. Yeah, maybe. Uh, So, which is basically nothing but the two circles, which is just sitting. And, and then clearly you can see that you cannot, you, you even don't need to solve. All you need to give is a, uh, is a move two. So, all you need to give is a two, like you say move two, and we'll be left with this uh, two circles. And you get another, uh, you, you also, you will also get another, Another uh, knot by replacing to the L knot. So what you obtain is uh, something like this. So, uh, so this is like. So it, 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 it will be something, it, it, it will look like something like that. So you can, you can actually see that it, 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 it will look something like that. So, so this corresponds to the L naught. So this is uh, L minus and this is L naught. So you, you create another two diagrams. And again, this, this guy is, uh, equivalent to this guy is actually equivalent to one uh, this guy is actually equivalent to unknown so again so what you have finally so what you have obtained that this delta d z you have obtained one unknown plus and then something which you do not know yet now this is this is this is this is not so straightforward. So when you evaluate this last bit, you can again give a right master move and bring one circle to another. And this is one <clears throat> just just look at this crossing, which really looks like an L knot. Any question? Uh, this is uh, this actually looks like an L knot. So again, you apply a sky relationship, and when you apply a sky relation, what you will find out that you can write down this thing and this I you know, okay, you can just explore it. You will find out. You can write down this as so. For example, this 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 delta of this whole thing. You can write down this as delta. And this gives you zero. So, what does it mean? It means that this guy, this uh, delta of uh, double two or not, this is equal to zero. At least in this polynomial system. So finally, if you put everything together, uh, shouldn't the one in delta d be multiplied by a z? Which one? Which one? Which one? Which one? The delta d z equals to one plus the one should be multiplied by a z, right? Ah, yes, 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 yes. yes. Ah, thank you for that. Yeah. Yes, it will multiply by z. So what you find out is, so you had you had already one plus something. You had already uh, one plus z. Uh, Delta dz, and 
delta d is further equal to it was one plus say delta this thing, but this thing is zero. So finally, if this thing is zero, then you have finally one plus this. So what you find out is this. Uh, this guy is one plus c square. Uh, is this Alexander Cohen polynomial for trifoil now? So this is basically Alexander Conway poly for trifoil. This is the Alexander Conway poly for trifoil. So what you what I just showed you is basically a recursive way. Of calculating uh, such polynomials using that repeated use of scanning relationship, but of course you have realized that you know first of all if you just naively do it, uh, it's a very uh, I mean it's, it, it 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 will take exponential time because you look for a crossing and what you do is you from each crossing you generate two uh, two diagrams and then from as on as, as far. So with three crossings, it may not be that difficult, but with more than one, I mean, with like there are not hundred crossings or so, then it will be an exponentially. It, it will take exponential. If you follow this algorithm, of course, it will take exponential time. But of course, improvement you can as a computer scientist when you, are, you realize that when it, whenever there's a recursion relationship that can be come that can be actually put into computer and automated. And you can design better. Uh, you can design better uh, algorithms to uh, be able to calculate it faster and so on. So forth. in classical computer, and then of course, you know when you go to quantum computer, you can try to think what kind of algorithm you can come up with. Uh, this kind of calculating not invariance that is much faster. Right? But that's how you can recursively calculate uh, this kind of polynomials. There are other polynomials. So for example, I. Told you the Jones polynomial, sorry, Jones poly, which has different, which has a different scaling relations. So for example, for Jones polynomial, the scaling relations look like this: t inverse t l plus t minus t t l minus t equal to fifty on this side t of l. So this is. This is a different scaling relationship for Jones polynomial. So similarly, there are other polynomials are there for which you can construct other uh, kind of uh, scaling relation, relationship. For example, so these are all one variable not polynomial. There is a something called a Homfly uh, PT uh, polynomial, which is a two variable not polynomial, which has. Uh, uh, Scan relationships given by this. So this is a two variable non polynomial because it has uh, alpha and z. So, and in fact, you alpha and z. So it's a two variable non polynomial. And Jones polynomial and Alexander Conway polynomials are both special cases of this uh, complexity polynomial. Now, what you get? So, for example, Jones polynomial is a very famous polynomial. You know, Hall Jones uh, invented this, discovered this in 1983. Uh, in fact, Jones uh, passed away, I think, one month or two months back due to uh, COVID. Uh, sorry, some other complications. But it's it's because. He found it rather in a different way. He found it from studying a lattice statistical model called Potts model, and there's another kind of model called Ice type model. And he was basically studying algebra that appear in those lattice statistical models. And from that model, he obtained these uh, polynomials. Of course, his original method was quite involved and difficult to understand. It was later Kaufman obtained some straightforward way to. Uh, Easier way, I would say, easier way to get this uh, polynomial invariant via something he introduced uh, called Kaufman brackets, some bracket polynomial. It's better algorithm to obtain this. Polynomial. So, what are these polynomials? But 
one problem is that these polynomials have the property one place where it alters is that suppose um, let's say a Jones polynomial. Suppose you have a Jones polynomial v k t is equal to v k prime. The big question is this, of course, that uh, whether this implies that k and k prime are equivalent. This is a big question. So, for example, the, the, there's an open problem. Nobody has proved it. And also, I think, found this strong that suppose for some not vkt is equal to 1, then does this imply that k is ambient isotopic to unknown? And so this is an open problem. So, but why it's an, it's, it, it's an important problem? It's an important problem because ultimately what you want to do, you are always finding, you, 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 you have two knots and all kinds of problematic looking and you would like to calculate the, this kind of knot invariance. And from that, you should be able to say that whether uh, they're equivalent or non-equivalent. While the non-equivalence is quite straightforward, that if they're not same, then they has to be non-equivalent. But if they are same, it's there is no guarantee that they will they are equivalent. Often you need more sophisticated structure, more sophisticated topological structure to answer this uh, question. So, like uh, you need uh, something called uh, so. For example, for Jones polynomial, uh, there's a related to Jones polynomial, there's a structure called uh, homology group which actually tells you which actually resolve this problem. But nevertheless, this kind of invariance, uh, this kinds of the, these are just not invariants, they are important and interesting in classifying these various uh, various knots. Obviously, what I told today is basic some combinatorial arguments, some combinatorial ways to construct it. Now, it's a purely mathematical uh, stuff. What in the next uh, session I will talk about, I will talk about um, in the next lecture I will talk about is what Edwitton found out, found out that Edwitton obtained a way to calculate this not polynomials. At least he suggested a way to calculate this not polynomials by studying um, correlation function, correlation functions in quantum field theories, in three-dimensional quantum field theories. To be precise, you calculate some expectation value, some correlation function in three-dimensional uh, John Simons theory, and you can obtain uh, not polynomial. Especially he focused on Jones polynomial, or rather I would say that his method, whatever he described, uh, only worked for giving in giving Jones polynomial, because other options are not even I think not even clearly obtained by physicists uh, in physics can computation. Because you need to, to stand that uh, any ground, you need to have the physics computation of that state. But it, it will be interesting because really you are, so you are asking for a mathematical problem to be solved. But what you are really doing is a, is a physics uh, cal computation, a physics calculation. So that's a fresh uh, viewpoint. And there are more sophisticated topological arguments or topological arguments for classification of these kinds of knots, which I think uh, is, is more instrumental in other kinds of questions regarding the quantum entanglement or something like that. So yeah, so let me end uh, today here. And uh, so I will pick it up uh, next on next lecture. Uh, what, how do we do this uh, starting from quantum field theory? How do we construct this? Yeah, okay. So, if there's any question, I can take. Uh, if there is no question, perhaps. Uh, uh,
it, you can stop recording. Fine, then we can, uh, uh, okay, if there's, a, if there's no question on this, so we can, uh, with it, with it, we can stop recording, so.